Hi everybody, Jacob Reed here from ReviewEcon.com. Today we're going to be looking at 2022's FRQ number three from set one. In order to do well on this question, you need to have gotten through unit two for microeconomics. This one's all about supply and demand. Let's go ahead and get into it. Now for this question, we are focusing on the market for good X. And we have four individual buyers of good X. And in this table, we have all the quantities that these consumers are willing to buy, along with the prices they'd be willing to pay for the different quantities. For part A, they tell us that the supply curve for this market is going to be perfectly elastic. That means it's horizontal. And we're going to have to draw a correctly labeled graph of the local market for good X, and the equilibrium price is going to be $5. We have to make sure we label that equilibrium price as $5 and identify the equilibrium quantity as well. So let's go ahead and draw out the price and quantity axis along with the horizontal supply curve since it's perfectly elastic. The demand curve is going to be downward sloping and we have our equilibrium price marked as $5. That's what you're gonna to need to get your first point. To get the second point, we're going to have to identify the correct quantity. In order to find the equilibrium quantity, we have to look at the numbers on the table. We see that Emily is willing to consume three units at $5. Wu and Omar are willing to consume two units at $5. And Fernanda is willing to consume one unit at $5. Add those all together, three plus two plus two plus one. And that tells us the equilibrium quantity at $5 is eight units. For part BI, we have to calculate the elasticity coefficient for good X when the price increases from $5 to $7. Now there are two different ways of calculating elasticity coefficients, but for the AP economics exam, the preferred method is the endpoint method. So we are going to be calculating the percentage change of quantity divided by the percentage change in price. And since we are using the endpoint method, we need to use new minus old divided by old times 100 to calculate the percentage change for both quantity and price. So we know that the price is going to increase from $5 up to $7, and the quantity demanded will decrease from eight units down to four units. The percentage change of quantity is negative 50% going from eight units down to four units, and the percentage change of price is 40% as the price increases from $5 to $7. And we have the endpoint method math right there for us. Once you've calculated the percentage change of quantity and the percentage change of price, plug them into the percentage change formula up there, and that gives us a coefficient of negative 1.25. And if you calculated it correctly and showed your work, you've got yourself the point. When it comes to question BII, we have to identify if the coefficient we just calculated tells us that the demand curve is elastic, inelastic, or unilastic in that price range. Now there will be a consistency point here, so if you calculated the coefficient incorrectly, you could still get this point. And if you drop the negative, an absolute value that is greater than one will be elastic. If it's less than one, that's inelastic, and if it's equal to one, that's unit elastic. Since we had an elasticity coefficient of negative 1.25, and that is an absolute value greater than one, that means the demand curve is elastic. And all you have to do is identify it to get the point. Finally, for part C, we are asked if Emily's marginal benefit for the second unit of good X could be equal to $4.50, and we have to explain. And if you look at the table, we can see that Emily is only willing to purchase one unit of good X at the price of $8. And the price of good X has to fall to $7 before she is willing to buy a second unit. But if you look over at $4.50 between four and five, she is willing to purchase three units there. And we have to remember that the marginal benefit of a good is always going to be at least as much as somebody is willing to pay for that good. And since Emily is willing to pay $7 for two units, that means she values that second unit at least $7, but less than $8 since she's only willing to purchase one at $8. So the answer we're looking for on this one is no, because Emily is willing to pay $7 for the second unit. So the second unit has to have a marginal benefit of at least $7. And there you have it. Those are your answers to the Microeconomics 2022 set one, number three. If after watching this video, you still need a little more help, head over to reviewecon.com and pick up the total review booklet. It has everything you need to know to ace your microeconomics or macroeconomics exam. That's it for now. I'll see y'all next time.